that right side. How are you feeling? Okay, somebody had Red Bulls. Middle, how are you doing? Yes. All right, guys in the back, can you do it better? Back, how are you doing? Okay, those guys are there to have a nap. Uh, we all know that everybody in the back just having a nap now. Uh, guys, I'm not gonna make this moment any longer because in front of you is something, ve somebody very special and I must say a little bit iconic. Would you say iconic? Yeah, I think she's iconic. Guys, I need a round of applause for Eliza Taylor! Please take a seat. Thank you. Hi, welcome to my living room. Oh, I love it. I it's love not done with the play. I know, it's new couches, a splash of paint, and just like 100 people. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's, that's brand new. It's just like my place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I was inspired. <laughs> well, welcome to the convention. It's so nice to have you here. Is it your first time in Germany? No. No, I've oh. been here before. I love Germany. Germany is nice, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's beautiful. It is beautiful. Did you have uh, some time to explore, maybe? No, I got in pretty late last night. So we got to have a nice dinner. Nice. Um, had some Italian. It was delicious. Very German-Italian, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm hoping that maybe I'll get out, out and about tonight. Why not? Yeah. Just check the town, paint the town red. Paint the town red, baby. Here you go. And I'm sorry, I'm gonna just, because it's, it's mesmerizing me and I need to get it out of the way. What is all your beautiful bracelets? Oh my gosh, these have been given to me by all of my lovely fans. Wow. Um, this is, I've just collected all these today. This is just from today? Yeah. This is so cute. I know, I love it. I feel like I'm at a Taylor Swift concert. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, now I'm jealous. Uh, I would like one as well. You know where to find me. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure someone would be happy to give you one. I hope so. It's really nice because it's, uh, it's, it's really shiny as well. So I was like, wow, this is really cool. Um, and of course the hundred has such a beautiful fan base. Those are such so, so dedicated fans. And I finally discovered why. Because it, I was like, why this show is um, magnetizing so many fans and so many dedicated fans. And I knew after I met a lot of you guys from the set, there's just a, such a beautiful family on set. And that translates on the screen and that is what magnetizes people in back. So this is this kind of interaction between you guys that it shows and we just love it back. And this and so thank you so much for that. Oh no, I mean we we were so lucky. It was, it was such an incredible experience. And they really, you know, those guys are my family and yeah, oh, literally. Yeah. <laughs> well now yeah. <laughs> I married one of them. <laughs> they liked us so much that we got married. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but how fascinating, yeah? You know, you go to a set and you, you come back with a husband. I know. <laughs> right? Did you ever think that? Uh, that your husband's gonna be an actor? Jesus. I know. The worst kind. <laughs> we just pretend for money. You know? Yeah, we pretend for money. You know, it's actually great. Like, it's... I mean, we get to shoot all of our auditions together. I've got, like, you know, basically a built-in director and reader <laughs> for all my auditions. And he understands. He understands. And, yeah, it's a... Yeah, we've got a great working relationship as well as, you know, an amazing marriage, so... Because you do uh, also um, star together. You didn't only star in The 100, but... Wait, I need to check my notes. Um, <laughs> I'll be waiting, is that correct? I'll be watching. Oh, watching. <laughs> I, I, I write. But I'll be watching. You start together there. We did, we did. It? it was interesting. We played um, we played a married couple, but it was kind of like the opposite of us. Like they were very unhappy and dysfunctional. So that part was like, oh, I wish we could play a happy couple. <laughs> <laughs> we have that daily. But yeah, but we have that in real life. <laughs> but it's also like, be careful because we're gonna, you know, end up like that couple from that movie. I know. Before. Yeah. Hello. I don't want that. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for, for indulging me with that. And I can see that we have some questions from the fans. Oh, hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Jay. Um, first of all, I wanted to 
thank you so much for coming. Um, I got so excited from <laughs> finding out about you attending UNESCON. Um, so my question is, um, we all knew that Clark went through a lot. Um, she went through so much pain and different kind of losses. And um, yeah, um, so I was wondering if you could give any of us that feel like they're in different and similar um, situations in life, um, how to keep on going if you even, also even if you feel like you you're losing yourself and and um, like she lost the love of her life, her brother, uh, her mom, her boyfriend, and so much more, and she never stopped fighting for like peace. Um, so, can you give any advice for people? Um, if I'm just so the question was any advice for how to carry yeah. on in different Kept on going. situations. Yes. I mean, I'm still learning that myself. Um, you know, I, I think one thing that Clark didn't do that I have learned is really important is self-care. <laughs> is, um, you know, making sure that your own cup is full so that you can look after those around you. You know, I, um, I have gone through life just not taking care of myself, like, through my 20s, I was just like, what can I do for everybody else? And like, at the end of the day, I just had nothing left. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't helpful for anyone. It wasn't helpful for me and it wasn't helpful for those around me who needed me. Um, and so, I mean, I, I think it's really important to make sure that you are getting enough sleep, enough food, enough connection, enough, um, uh, you know, just of the basics so that you can uh, then, you know, be of use to others and to, that's how you carry on, <laughs> if that makes sense. And the other question is, uh, did you ever wear, wear, wear a, big, uh, a wig in the show or was this your real hair, your real hair every time? Sorry, say that again. Um, did you ever wear a wig, a wig in the show? Wig. Wig. Did your hair in the show or did you have wigs? Oh, I see. It was a combination. Um, it, in season one, it was my hair. Um, and then it, as the seasons went on, I had like more and more hair extensions. I was wearing more and more other people's hair. <laughs> and then... <laughs> Um, and then there was, when I was one header, there was that red wig uh, that was obviously not my hair. Um, and then in the later seasons, I just chopped my hair off so that it was like easy to do, because, you know. Just put a show or Yeah. Yeah, so I could just like roll out of bed and then pretty much be done. <laughs> right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, I wanted to ask you how it was for you working in Sleepover Club and also how did you find out that you got the part and how you reacted? Okay, so is anyone familiar with Sleepover Club here? Yeah. Okay, a few people. Um, so I did, I did that show when I was 13, I think I turned 14 while we were filming. Um, it was a very long, long time ago. 20 years ago, oh my god. Um, but that was like an incredible experience. It was one of those shows where I made friends for life and we were all teenagers, like we're just like on the cusp, we were like turning into teenagers. So as you can imagine, we were a nightmare <laughs> for the crew. Um, but it was a beautiful experience for us, and yeah, I have some incredible friends from that show. And what was the second part of your question? How you reacted when you found out that you got the part as Rosie? As Rosie? Oh my god, I mean, when I was that age, getting a role was like... It still is, actually. What am I talking about? 
getting a role at any age is like, I, you get the phone call. Back then it was a landline. <laughs> um, and they, they called my mum's, you know, landline and, and it was my agent and I answered the phone and then I'm just like jumping up and down like, God, you know. <laughs> it's the best feeling in the world. I still jump up and down, but now I have a smartphone. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks. It's easy to jump and down without the cable. Yeah, exactly. You don't get like twisted up in it. <laughs> Next question. Hi. Uh, I was wondering uh, in the hundred, um, when do you think uh, Clark first fell in love with Flexa? Oh, God, I need to rewatch the show. <laughs> um, we met in season two. When did we fall in love? Straight away. Was it love at first sight? I don't know the answer to this question. We have, uh, we have maybe an idea of the scene. Yeah, go um, on. Like when Krupp was running away from the guard uh, of Lexa who was trying to kill her. And then Pona arrived, and oh, Lexa yeah. right before us saved her, and Clark said thank you, she didn't know really what to say. Yeah, okay, I like that. When there was the giant gorilla. Yeah. <laughs> That's when they fell in love. Only on the 100 can, you, can that be a love story. We were chased by a giant gorilla and that's when I knew. <laughs> She's the one. <laughs> She's the me. <laughs> yeah, that's a really, I'd say that you're right. And I just, I have got to rewatch it because I forget about all these beautiful moments and yeah, and, and ridiculous moments. I mean, a giant gorilla, come on. A, mu a mutant gorilla, crazy. Just a day, day in life. A day in the life. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, next question, please. Hi, Eliza. Um, I also met you last year, so it's really nice to see you again. Uh, we actually share a name. My name, uh, my name is Eliza too. <laughs> and um, my question is, uh, why did you be, uh, why did you want to become an actress? Why did I want to become an actress? Uh, yeah, like what, what, what um, made you think like, oh, I want to start acting now? Um, oh my goodness. So I was really young. I was 11. I didn't, I, I wanted to be a marine biologist. I didn't know that I wanted to be an actor. It wasn't until um, I got my first role, which was on a show called Pirate Islands. Um, and it was my first day on set and I think I've just filmed my very first scene ever. And I said to my, I turned to my mom and I said, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, I can't really describe the feeling. I just, it, I just knew and I, and I still, 20 however many years later, feel exactly the same every time I step on set. I go, oh, I'm home. This is where I'm meant to be. I love it so, so much. And yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Next question, please. Hey, it's so nice to see you again. Um, <laughs> the present now? Um, <laughs> perfect. So I want to ask a little bit of a random question, but what is uh, your favorite Disney movie? Or if that's too difficult, what is your top three? Favorite Disney movie? Well, I. I, have, I, I owe my American accent to The Little Mermaid um, because growing up I watched it over and over and over and over and over again and I even like would not answer to Eliza, I would only answer to Ariel <laughs> for a good like year I would say um, uh, and um, more recently I, I love Moana because my son is obsessed with Moana and he sings um, How Far I'll Go at the top of his lungs all the time and it is the cutest thing to see a two-year-old sing that song. So, yeah. <laughs> That's so sweet. Thank you for answering and may we meet again. <laughs> Thank you. May we meet again. Thank you. Next question, please. Hi. I have two questions. 
The first question is, if you could play someone else, who would you play in the hundred, of course? And the second question is, what do you think would be the story of the hundred if Lexus survives and Grandfire is still coming? Okay, let's go to question one and then I'm going to get you to repeat question two. Because <laughs> my brain can't hold two questions at one time. <laughs> um, so question one, what, what, my, my brain can't hold any questions. What was question one? Question one is, if you could play someone else in the hundred, who would you play? Oh, yeah. So this, this answer changes a lot for me. Um, depending on my mood. Because <laughs> um, sometimes I'm like, I would love to play Jasper. Um, and then sometimes I'm like, I would love to play uh, Murphy. Because he's like such, he's like a pretty unusual character in the way that you love him but you hate him. Um, but today I was like, I would love to, like, I'd love to play Alexa. Like, how fun would that be? Um, that was my answer today, and I'm sticking to it. Who would you play? I think I can guess. I don't know. <laughs> I would play my own OC, I think. <laughs> and I have many OCs in this show, so... <laughs> a fiction writer. Um, my second question, if you want to ask this, answer this question, I'm sorry, uh, was if Lexa survives, what would you think would happen in the story? And the brand from your mind. If 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 Lexa was alive. Yes, but Prime Fire is still coming. What do I think would have happened? Yes. Oh, dude, I'm not a writer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <gasps> I don't know. I w you know some actors have such good answers to these questions, and I'm like, um, <laughs> like <laughs> I don't know. I mean, at least, I don't know, I guess Lexa and Clark would have just, like, shacked, shacked up in, in that, like, lab and, so, you know, survived together. Oh. Yeah. Somehow. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you for your question, though. Thank you. I'll think about it. But what do you think would happen? What is your answer to that? Oh, my answer? I think that he would survive uh, alone on the earth by the others uh, on the ring and under the ground with Maddie. So that he would raise Maddie like their own child. Uh -huh. And Maddie was so brief, bad as mothers. Yes, it's a perfect hello. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you too. Thanks. Next question, please. Hi. So, I wanted to ask you, what's your favorite memory from filming The Hundred? Oh my goodness. That's a tough one. That's a tough one, because there's a lot. And there's a lot of, like, that I think I've forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my gosh. So, I mean, what sticks out for me, like, there's a couple of moments that stick out for me. One, I think one uh, memory that's really special was shooting the season three finale in the City of Light. Because um, it was after, up until then, we'd never shot anything in a, in a city. It had all been out in the forest and we were all dirty and bloody and gross. Um, so being able to like be clean Clark and like walk out into a city. I just thought it was, you know, and like the reunion with Lexa and everything, it was so much fun. And it was the first time that like I'd seen fans um, that come to watch us film. And that was really cool. Like people had signs and they were like cheering us on when we were doing our like fight scenes. And I was just, I, I think it was when I realized that the show had had a, a like a, a real fan base. I was like, oh my goodness! Like people really like this. What we're doing here, um, and so for many reasons, that's one of my fondest memories. It was really cool. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Thank you so much. Next question, please.
Hi, um, I wanted to ask, what was your favorite season of The 100? Ooh. Um, I love season one because it's like the OG, you know, it's like it, it, it was my first American show, it was like a really big deal um, because I'd never been on an American set before, I'd never, like everything just felt so big, like the, the sets, the, the crew was ten times the size of a crew in Australia. <laughs> Um, and the story was so, I loved like, you know, the, um, this kind of split storyline. You had like space and then you had what was going on on the ground. And I just thought that was really great storytelling. Um, but it's just really nostalgic for me. I feel like I was such a baby when, uh, we shot season one and, um, yeah, it's a, yeah, it's so fun to look back on and. Yeah, season one. Thank you. That's my end. What is your favorite season? Um, See, difficult questions you guys ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. I'm sorry to put you on the spot. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Um, first of all, I wanted to say that I'm a big fan. Oh, and okay. I watched The 100 a few times. And my first question is, what's your favorite kiss scene in the series? Favorite scene? Kiss scene. Kiss. Kissing? Yes. Favorite kiss Favorite kissing, kissing scene? Kiss. Kissing scene, yes. Ooh, hot Ooh. question. <laughs> Did I kiss that many people? <laughs> okay. I don't know, it's always so awkward doing like kissing scenes in like in front of a crew of people you're just like this is weird and it's not sexy either because you're like they're like can you move your face the way that it doesn't want to move so that we can get her nose in front of your nose and like you know like it's just it's so technical but not to take away from the magic <laughs> um, I mean I don't, yeah, I don't know. I don't really, I don't know that I have a favorite. I mean, it's fun to kiss a, a bunch of hot people. You know, a job. And, and get paid for it. <laughs> like, that's pretty cool. <laughs> what was your next question? Because I'm like blushing. I don't have any question, but I wanted to tell you that you're pretty. Oh, thank you. That's it. Thanks so much. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, what a risque question. I know, what a question <laughs> too. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to say something. I always forget that you're Australian. Yeah. It is just so easy to forget because when we see you on screen, there's no Australian accent. Yeah. You're doing the aerial. <laughs> I'm doing aerial, yeah. <laughs> uh, is accents your strong suits? Because you did British accent as well, I think. Yeah, I did, I, I did a British accent in the Sleepover Club and in um, a film that I did in Australia called It Only Takes a Night. Um, you know it's not my strong suit. I think growing up with American television, it's, it was easy. That's like general Americans easy. But you try, you get me to do regional America, like that shit is hard. <laughs> I, I thought that I could do it easily because I was like, well, if I can do one accent, I can do all of them. All of them. No. And that is definitely not the case. It's a lot of training as well. It is. It's really hard. It yeah, hard. I'm learning that now. <laughs> I, just, I just did an audition recently. This is a bit of a tangent, but uh, it, I had to play a southern girl and I could like I thought, I finished the audition and I was like, I nailed it. I did such a good job. I get a call from my agent two hours later. I'm like, oh my God, they're calling to tell me that I was amazing. <laughs> and they were like, you need to retake this. The accent is so bad. Oh no. <laughs> they were like, just do it in your normal American accent. I was like, oh no, I was so embarrassed. So anyway, there you go. 
But I think this is something cool about the, the way that the auditioning changed because it used to be that you go to a room and you like perform right. on the spot yeah. and if you don't perform, you're gone. Yes. Whereas now when you guys can tape it, it's just much easier because first of all, you can like you can do it again. Yeah, you can do it again. And second yeah. of all, they can call you to retake, which is amazing. I know, and I love that. Yeah. I, I It agrees with me doing yeah. auditions at home. One, one thing about COVID that was actually helpful. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, because that's Absolutely. changed. Yeah. So, so that's pretty cool. And uh, if we're talking about the art of acting. I also read somewhere that when you were playing Josephine, you, you made this little trick on yourself that you use a different perfume. Yes! Playing. Wow, you did do your research. Yeah, I, like this is, you know, full of notes, <laughs> just because I don't write very well. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't. <laughs> no, but uh, so a part of that little trick, do you have any other uh, tricks or tips for young actors that would like to uh, perfect their, their, their skill or their art of acting. Um, is there a lot of uh, young actors in the place? There you go. Whoa, nice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, everyone's so different and yeah, one thing that, that I, I like to do is, um, is uh, like, I like to pick a scent, <laughs> a perfume for each character that I play. It just, it helps me to like, as soon as I see I smell it, I go, okay, it settles me into the character. But people do all sorts of things, like Richard Harmon, who played Murphy, he had a Murphy playlist, so you would see him on set listening to music that would get him into Murphy. And it was all really, like, depressing music. <laughs> or, like, rock and roll, like, um, grungy, emo stuff. Um, and so, like that was his thing. That that really worked for him. And I think it's a it's a really personal um, pursuit. Like it's whatever kind of gets you grounded in in the moment in your character. It's pretty uh, interesting. To, you can morph to completely different characters. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> hey, you are. Uh, and then just a, one last uh, ask for tip because I, a lot of actors' work is also dealing with rejection. And it is so difficult for us humans to be rejected, whereas in <laughs> actor's job, this is most of the times yeah. that you get rejected. Do you have any tips on how to like get over this, or, or you're still learning as well? Because this is the hard spot. Just yeah. to said no. I think with you know rejection, yeah, it like it doesn't it doesn't necessarily get easier, but you do get better at letting go, letting it go. Like you, I mean, it just, it happens so often. <laughs> like I picked such a great career. <laughs> it happens so often, but the thing is, it's not about you. It's not that you failed. It's not that you have um, done the wrong thing. You interpreted the character the way that you, you read it. And they're, that you're, they're just, looking for something else, someone else, and they'll know it when they see it. And it's not personal, and it doesn't mean you didn't do a fabulous job, you know? And I think just knowing that, um, and knowing that there will be the right one for you, you know? That eventually, um, you'll get a role, and then you'll be like, you forget all the rejection. You're like, oh, I'm amazing! <laughs> you just feel so good. And, that like outweighs all of the, the bad stuff. So it's worth it. It's worth it, it's worth it, in my opinion. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. And before I let you go, yeah. can I ask you for one more little favor? Sure. Would you like to do a selfie with all of the audience right now? I would love that. Because we have our Jenna with her professional uh, camera. Guys, are you? All right, three, two, one, guys, hands up! Again, three, two, one, hands up! Perfect, guys. Guys, a round of applause! Thanks, guys! Thank you so much. Guys, a round of applause for Eliza. You can find her on our signing booth.
Thank you.